namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Come into the sublime one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. Come into the sublime one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. Come into the sublime one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. <coughs> Good evening friends. Now we are ready to start our evening session. today my topic is mahamangala sutta great blessings discourse in this red book you can find page number 37 so this sutta is very simple the language is very simple but it has a deep meaning when we going into deeper level we can see uh, so many deep things about the teachings of the buddha perhaps sometimes you can see uh, depending origination in here and for definitely for noble truths and uh, definitely noble eight pole paths all these teachings are here in this discourse but it's look like very simple uh, anybody can understand is look like that as i mentioned in my introduction talk this is the way how the buddha explain same thing in different ways same thing as i mentioned 45 years is spent in 45 years 84000 sermons had given by the buddha but same teachings 84 sir, 84000 sermons given by the buddha to explain four noble truths and noble eight pole path in here in this discourse also explain same thing but in different way very simple way because it's completely dependent on the ordination uh, sorry audience is completely depend on the audience what kind of audience are there in this discourse there's a background story group of people who are not able to understand the way how we can get blessings they were having debate talking each other was not able to come to conclusion so that that matter that the uh, arguments discussions went to the devas deities they also having debate and discussions and uh, arguments was not able to come to conclusion so then there was a deity who who knew the buddha suggested why you are not going to see the buddha and ask this questions from the buddha then first this question was with the human beings it went to divine beings and then now divine beings are coming to see the buddha while buddha was dwelling in jetavana savatti jetavana name of the temple uh, the city name is savatti we call it savatt uh, i don't know the modern name for that but anyway uh, when uh, Buddha was dwelling there in mid of night group of deities came and sat by the Buddha and then they arose this questions many deities and humans have pondered on blessings desire in their well being tell me the blessing supreme bahu deva manussacha mangala anya chintayum akanka manasottana bruhi mangala muttama this is the request made by the deities there are so many deities as well as human beings are pondering 
they are, they are thinking and thinking, thinking and thinking, having arguments and debates, was not able to find what are the blessings, the way how we can get blessed. And not even those days, even today, people are wondering the way how we can get blessings. No? That's why they apply, I mean, generally people apply many methods to get blessings. Many methods get blessings. I have seen while walking in New York City, there, there, there are some people robe on, people offer money to get blessings. That is also another way. Whether they, they are fake or not, they don't know, <laughs> but they like. And also, they like to get something to wear in their hands to get blessings from that uh, wandering, I don't know whether fake monks or not, uh, but look like they are wearing a robe. Uh, they are not uh, Theravadian, they are, look like Mahayana. But people are wondering, people thinking to get blessings. So many things we do still. This mean, luckily if they got a chance to listen to this <laughs> sermon, this Dhamma talk, I think they might be able to find solution, the way how we can get blessings. Dear friends, before you start this discussion, keep in your mind to bless someone you have to purify your mind. Without purifying your mind, you can bless to others. Same way, you also have some kind of uh, decrease, purifications of your mind and actions. So these two things are very important, to get blessings and give blessings. Likewise, if you want to say someone on, on their birthdays, happy birthday, to say happy birthday, you have to have clean mind. There are not should be any hatred, any jealous, any kind of uh, unwholesome thoughts. Then when you have pure and clean mind, then you can say happy birthday. Exactly they, that person can get blessed. Otherwise, just saying happy birthday, keeping all unwholesome thoughts in here, jealousy, envy, and all these things, it is just a word. There is no any blessings. So, that's why generally people use, the, it should come uh, bottom of your heart. Bottom of your heart means it should come through your mind. But generally people don't know about the mind, that's why they said it should come bottom of your heart. Actually, it should come through your mind. This means you have to purify your mind. So, somehow, it's explained in this sutta. The deities was asking what are the way that we can develop, or gain our blessings, or uh, give blessings. What are the blessings things? Then the Buddha start to explain. There are 38 facts. There are 38 factors explained in this Mangala Sutta, Blessing Discourse. So we can see, as a person, as a practitioner, how we can develop our blessings and how, as well as how we can give to someone, how we can give blessings to someone, we can see through these uh, suttas. But anyway, blessing is very important. We are willing to get blessings as well as we are willing to give blessings. These two things are there in our mind. The first one, Buddha explained, to associate not with the foolish, to be with the wise, to honor the worthy ones, this is blessing supreme. What do you think about this fact? To associate not with the foolish, to be with wise. To be what? To be with wise. To honor the worthy ones, this is blessing supreme. Let's think about the first two things. Associate not with the foolish. Can you gain your blessings without associating foolish? Is it correct? Is it correct? 
and can you get can you gain blessings just associate in vice these two guys foolish guy and wise guy who are they where we can find them in the university wise people are living in the university who is holding uh, two phd's three phd's is that the guy that we should associate it does mean here no way then uh, who are the police people who are the people who i mean according to in general way people talking about oh, he is a police guy he don't know anything i'm the person who knows everything something like that we have in general ideas but is that the meaning in here no this is very clean thing there's a, another expl explanation anguttara nikaya numeral numeratical order discourses in tikanipat it's explained the qualities of the police one how we can recognize police one it's explained balato bayang upajati no panditato fear arises because of police one one quality fear arises because of police one no panditato wise person not create fear so that's one thing in dhammapada it's explained putta matti dana matti iti balo vihanyati the way how the police one think police one is thinking thus i have wealth i have children putta matti dana matti who is thinking thus he is foolish who said this the buddha said so now you can understand you can get some ideas to recognize who is who is foolish who create fear not create who arise fear if someone uh, develop some kind of situations to increase fear with us he is foolish guy he is foolish if someone thinking does i have wealth i have children i don't know to worry about anything he is foolish too he is foolish too that is the way how the person who is considered as a foolish the way how 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 he is think how he is thinking so according to this explanation the foolish one is like a person who can't think deeply and widely he is the police one who is not able to think deeply and widely as well as quickly he is police then your mother would be police your father would be police yourself would be police your brother your sister your own children could be police so then how we can stay without associate them you have to raise that questions in here good advice don't associate police but according to the buddha's explanation who is police recognizing their qualities so now we can see yourself your family members it might be your family members very close family members likewise your mother father brother sister uh, your own children they might be foolish so then how we can say without associate we are living with them we are living with them this is the very important tricky part don't associate means don't associate their their weaknesses don't associate their weaknesses physically we can live with anyone it doesn't matter it does not mean in here don't eat with them don't stay don't dwell in in same place with them that is not the meaning 
don't marry them, that is not the meaning. <laughs> don't associate mean, don't take their weaknesses. Because you already have weaknesses, you don't take more weaknesses from others, particularly from foolish people. So then, associate wise means living, not living with them. Associate wise means not living. Who is the wise person? Wise person is the person who can think deeply, widely and quickly. He is wise. Not the person who is holding two, three PhDs, who had done so many books. He is not the wise person. He is not the wise person. Wise person means who can think deeply, widely and quickly. He is wise person. So associating means try to gain his qualities with you. Looking at him, talking to him, living with him. You can see his qualities, try to gain these qualities with you, within you. That is the meaning of associates as to associate wise. Otherwise, Devadatta, one of monk who was with the Buddha. But he was not able to attain enlightenment. Devadatta was not able to attain enlightenment. Not even attain Sotapanna. He always thought to kill Buddha and he wanted to become Buddha. Just killing Buddha. That, 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 that was the idea he had. So he was planning for that. Somehow he uh, he was associate with the uh, with the, with the king's son, Acha Satta. He had been advising Acha Satta, okay, you kill your father and take his kingdom, become the king of your place, your in this kingdom. I am going to kill the Buddha. I will become the Buddha, then we both can run this country. They had that kind of plan. But that is not the way how wise persons uh, live, the way that is not the way how we can develop our insight. Insight means thinking ability. So, associating means living with wise people, you can't gain their, uh, you can't develop any of their qualities. Just associate. It's happened to Devadatta. Devadatta lived with Buddha, but he was not able to develop any of the qualities that Buddha developed. He was not able to even to realize any of teachings of the Buddha. Why? Just associate means living with them, we are not able to gain anything. So associate means we have to gain ourselves all these qualities. In Dhammapada, there is a stanza which explains the nature of wise person. So we also should be wise, living with wise people, we also should be wise to understand their patterns, their qualities. In Dhammapada it says, very uh, famous uh, stanza, uh, they are using a simile. When you start to cook something like a soup, just think about soup, beginning to end, spoons, or lid is connecting with the soup, beginning to end. But is there any chance that lid can taste the taste of the soup? No. But when we touch, when, when taking drop of soup, just putting in your tongue, right away tongue can recognize the taste of the soup. 
you should be that kind of person that is the nature of wise wise person can recognize right thing in right way foolish person like that lid which is uh, always with the soup hmm, but doesn't understand the taste same thing happened to devadatta he was living with buddha not even his whole life was buddha while buddha was living before attain enlightenment he was living in lay life devadatta was there because he is cousin brother but he was not able to recognize the buddha so we have to be like a tan it means we have to develop some qualities to gain things from wise people to gain things from wise people so in this manner in here is not talking about the physical association it's talking about uh, intellectual relationship spiritual relationship we have to develop with our wise people same way we not supposed to have any kind of uh, spiritual connection with police one because their weaknesses will come to us that's that's the reason we already have weaknesses we are trying to eliminate our weaknesses that is our main purpose so therefore instead of developing our wholesomeness why we want to take uh, unwholesome thoughts from someone else this is this is the meaning of this two factors don't associate police associate wise mean not the person about their nature weaknesses and qualities and honor the worthy ones why we want to honor the worthy one respectable honor the one why we want to respect why what is the reason why we want to honor in dhammapada there is a stanza abhivadana silisa nichang vadda pachayino chattaro dhamma vadanti when you start to honor the worthy one there are four qualities that you can gain yourself ayu varna sapa bal actually not four five qualities ayu means you can develop your age living span varna your appearance it will develop sapa comfort it may comfort bal strength energy panya wisdom all these five things that you can gain honoring the worthy one how how who is the worthy one worthy one means who is on the path to attain enlightenment practice in dhamma tame in word and actions developing their mind they are developing their spirituality they are worthy it might be your mother father teachers ancestors brothers and sisters or whoever it doesn't matter important thing is focus on their qualities that they develop that they practice they are very honorable they are very uh, worthy because they are trying to control their defilements they are worthy because they are trying to control their defilements this is the most important thing so respect them respect means follow them apply their methods apply their methods the buddha advice to the monks the way how they can respect the buddha the buddha did not ask okay please come to me with flowers to respect me please come to with the other 
things to respect me. What Buddha said? The best way that you can respect me, follow my teachings. Follow in my teachings, attain in that supreme level, that is the best way that you can respect me. There is a story, during the Buddha's time, there were two friends. One guy is kind of old, not much, kind. Other one was young. Somehow they were practicing Dhamma together as a lay people. One day, having discussions, they thought, better to ordain. They wanted to become monks. So according to their desire, find, they found teachers and they ordain. Under, under the guidance of a teacher. So then, the young one was telling, okay, I can memorize suttas and things, therefore first I would like to learn the teachings of the Buddha. The second one said, I'm kind of old, my memory is not sharp like you memory, therefore I like to practice. Practice means, to develop sila, samadhi, panya, focusing on meditation. Okay, then they both separated. They live, live in, in some uh, same area, but separate places. The one who started to learn the teachings of the Buddha, within in few years, he was able to learn each and every sutta delivered by the Buddha. So now he started to teach others. Now the students are growing. Uh, he's also maintained uh, 500,000 uh, uh, students. Other one who was practicing and practicing attain enlightenment. And then he also started to teach Dhamma to help others to attain for their enlightenment. Few years later, somehow they both met. Few years later. So then they started to discuss. The first one, the young one who, who learned Dhamma, suttas, started to make questions regarding suttas. Do you know that sutta? No idea. I, I, I did not get, I, di, I, I, I didn't read that. Do you know this sutta? No. I don't know. What the hell? <laughs> you done uh, spending many years as a monk. You don't know anything? The monk who learn is blaming to the monk who practice. So now there is arguments and then at the end, the message went to the Buddha. Complaining by him, the message went to the Buddha. Because he is a monk, but he don't know this sutta, that sutta. What he gained, nothing. Just eating and sleeping. So the, he made a complaint. So somehow it went to the Buddha. So, in front of them, the Buddha start to question, from the practitioner, how is your defilements? How is your mindfulness? Then that practitioner was telling, Bhante, I don't have any defilements in my mind. My mindfulness is very great. Each and every nanosecond, I am mindful. My mind is not losing anything. I'm aware each and every moment. Then how about uh, fear? I don't have any kind of fear. How about doubt? I don't have any kind of doubt. Nothing. I don't have fear. I don't have doubt. How about your happiness? My happiness in top of level. I'm happy always with everything because my Equanimity is very high, established. He is an enlightened one. 
then would the turn into that person who, 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 who was learning so many discourses and then making same questions, he was not able to be happy all the time. He is not mindful all the time. He is living with defilements. Even though who can memorize so many discourses, then Buddha directly addressed the practice one. So in practice one, Buddha said, you are my real son. Foolish one, what have you done in here? Then Buddha said, the one, the word <laughs> Buddha used, foolish one. Moga Purisa. You are not my son. See, he can memorize all the discourses delivered by the Buddha. He, he has a lot of students. But he is not able to apply with him. He is not able to apply to his life. The Buddha did not consider them as Buddha's followers. It means just memorizing is not the way how you can respect the Buddha. To respect the Buddha, you have to gain the qualities that Buddha had, Buddha developed within yourself. So, we honor the worthy ones that way. Buddha, Arahant, Pacheka Buddha, and there, are, there were some monks who attained Sotapanna and who attained Jhanas, who knew the Tripitakas very well, who practiced. All these monks, all these orders are worthy ones. Even the person who observes five precepts and who takes care, he is also a worthy one. Respect mean to them means we also behave like them. It means not physically, mentally. We have to gain ourselves, their spiritual development. So that is the way how we can respect the worthy one. Otherwise, put in statues here and there, the worthy ones, and uh, uh, giving uh, uh, flowers to them, that is not the way how Buddha said to respect. You have to develop that qualities with us. This is the way, the best way, how we can honor the worthy one. So it is blessings. You can apply this method yourself, then you can see whether it is giving blessings for you or not. You or not. So the particularly about uh, associating wise one, even in the morning Bhante Ji was mentioning, there are few suttas that mention to attain enlightenment there are few things that you should particularly about four things kalyanamitta dhamma savana dhamma sammasrana uh, all these qualities are requirements to attain sotapanna kalyanamitta is one thing this means you should have good friends good friends means who practice don't forget about practicing just the teachings of the Buddha. Who knows monks, who knows Tripitaka, it doesn't matter. Who is developing inside spirituality? That is the most important. Who is not guiding us to wrong direction? Who is not guiding us to wrong directions, to do bad things, harmful things, wicked things? Who is helping us? all the time to do right thing, good things, wholesome things, he is a wise person. He is also doing the same thing and he is helping us to do the same. So, associate those people, don't associate other people which we consider as a foolish one. And respect the worthy one, taking their qualities to our life, developing those qualities within us. So, this is blessing supreme. Second instance are to recite in a suitable location to have a good past, uh, past deeds done to set oneself in the right directions 
This is Blessed Supreme. In here, to reside in a suitable location, what does it mean, suitable locations? It means uh, can't we live around the world? Suitable locations mean where you can find good friends. That's the first thing. Where you can listen Dhamma. Where you can have an opportunity to discuss Dhamma. Dhamma means natural law, not just the thing, don't just narrow it to, oh, just suttas, just the teachings of the Buddha. Natural law. Dhamma means natural law. You might remember yesterday we were talking about that. So, if there is a place having these facilities, opportunities for us, that place is suitable place to live. Because you can associate good friends, no any harmful influence, there is no any danger because you are always with the good friends. They are willing to protect us all the time. They don't have any kind of unwholesome thoughts for us. So therefore, they are clean and clear in their, in their behavior as well as in their thoughts. And you have opportunity to listen to Dhamma. You have opportunity to discuss Dhamma. So these are the wonderful places that we can live that we have to find live, to find. So, it is one quality, get blessings. Another one, how good fast deeds done. Past is over. We don't know what we have done. But, think about even this moment, within in nanosecond it's going to past. So therefore, focus on this moment, Use this moment to gain wholesomeness with you, is the, is the meaning. Have good past deeds done. It is blessings for you for next, next moment. So therefore, use this moment. Definitely, that moment will consider as a fast within a nanosecond. So, therefore, using this moment, gain wholesomeness with you, it will help, it will benefit, benefits, beneficial for you to next moment. And set oneself in the right directions. I mean, definitely, yes, we should have uh, to focus on right direction. Atta Panidhi. When we have a journey, we have to have clear idea about the path. Without knowing your path, so then when we get into roads, get in on roads, you're in trouble. You don't know where you have to go. Therefore, there should be the path very clean. That's why to get support we have GPS. Yeah? Using GPS you can put their address and then put in the address, it will show you the path, the way how you have to get there, how many minutes you should spend there, the speed limit how, uh, that you should maintain, all these things should be there. Not only that, even today sometimes some apps might show you where the cops are. <laughs> the protections. <laughs> so, <laughs> so therefore, you have to have right directions when you have your journey. It is blessings. In here, it does mention about a spiritual journey. In a spiritual journey. To have right direction, what's right, what kind of things you should have? Good friends. Whether you can listen to Dhamma, whether you can discuss Dhamma with others. So all these are the right, right directions that we have to consider. Very important thing is to listen to, to discuss, to talk about wholesome things. 
not harmful things, useful things. So if somewhere that we can find all these facilities, so it is right directions, your own right directions. You all have right directions, that, that's why you all are here in this meditation hall in this moment. Because you all have thoughts to develop your insight, to, to develop your spirituality. So having that goal, you are here to listen to Dhamma, discuss Dhamma. We are not discussing any harmful, dangerous, bad things in here, unwholesome things here. We are discussing very wholesome, peaceful, useful things in here. So therefore, you are, you all are on right directions. Great learning and craft and the discipline well trained in and whatever utterance is well spoken, this is a blessing supreme. Great learning and craft. You have to develop power skills. Learning and craft. These are the meanings of the skills. Learning means you should gather some information. We need sometimes information. Uh, without information, sometimes we may not be able to find the reality. To find reality, we have to gather information. You all are gathering information from me. That is the meaning of listening to Dhamma, gathering information. We need. So then we know what we should do through that information. But we have to use that information in our practice, in our practice. So, great learning and craft and the discipline, well training. We have fact, uh, bases, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. We have to train, we have to discipline all these bases, faculties. Why? If you are not trained according to fire sermons, eye is burning, ear is burning, tongue is burning, nose is burning, body is burning, not because of weather not because of temperature, because of pure greed, hatred and delusions. Therefore, we have to tame our faculties, our faculties. That's the meaning of discipline, well trained in. Whatever the pictures that you can see, whether you accept or reject, it doesn't matter. You are not supposed to attach to too much for that. Attach to too much for that. That is the way how you can discipline it. That's the way that you can discipline it. Sounds. There are sounds that you can like, you accept. You like to hear it again and again. But you have to tame your ear, not giving opportunity for it to listen to more and more. You have, you have just listen it and control it. Now, particularly in these days, we are talking about addictions. If you are not able to tame your basis, <coughs> faculties, you are ending with kind of addictions. Addictions are not healthy things. So we have to addict to wholesomeness, practice Dhamma, to develop our spirituality. That is the addictions that we should keep. Not, to addiction, not, not the addictions to help our ear, nose, tongue, or these body parts. That is dangerous because we don't know about our time, we don't know about our wealth, 
all these things going away without knowing when we addicted to any of these things. So therefore, we have to tame, we have to control, we have to discipline. That discipline is very helpful for us to follow that path, going into right directions, living with that uh, uh, wholesome path, which is very help helpful, tame in your word, actions, and all these bases, faculties. That's why we want to do that. Just think about, for example, if there is a student who is studying well, but he has addictions to watch movies or play games, particularly games. Can that student maintain high scores within that, with that addictions? It is impossible because his addictions, when the addictions is very strong, he is not able to manage his faculties because of addictions. Therefore, we have to control our faculties mindfully. Mindfully control. We have to control mindfully. When we are able to control, there are so many benefits that we can get. So many benefits. Discipline, well training. And whatever utterance is well spoken, the words that we use should be well spoken. It means it should come through your mindfulness. Not mere words. Not just blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. No meaning, just blah, 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 spending time. So that is not the way that you can gain blessings. If you want to gain blessings, you should spoken gentle, humble words. Well spoken means that. Beginning is very clear, middle is very clear, end of also very clear, as well as meaningful. Meaningful. So th these are very important to get blessings supreme. To be well caring of mother or father, looking after spouse and children, to engage in ha harmless occupations, this is blessing supreme. To be well caring of mother or father, why? Why we want to care our mother and father? Why? What is the reason? What is the purpose? Are they important for us in our life, our parents? How? How important our parents for our life? Even though we are individual, everything that we have in, in this very life coming from our parents. Just think about the breath. Breath is the most important thing. Where did you get that breath from your mother and father? The blood that you are holding in your body, very important for our life. Where did you get this blood from your mother and father? Therefore, we don't want to have any other things to think about. How important parents for our life, mother and father. How important them. Through these things, now today we do so many activities, we can walk, we can jump, we can do all kind of jumps, high jump, long jump, all the jumps. All these activities started with the help of our parents. You might remember when mother or father hold in our hands when we were little one, they were helping us to change the steps. Okay, come on, one, two, three, something like that. They were helping us. 
perhaps you might have experience doing these things for your kids. Then you can recognize how was with our parents. Who are parents now, they are the people who can really understand about the, their parents. So, but anyway, everything, the skills that we have, the language that we use, the culture that we are living, everything coming from our parents. Everything coming from our mother or father. Therefore, they are kind of worthy, respectable people. So therefore, we have obligations to take care of them. We have obligations to take care of them. Particularly, there is another sutta, Parabhava Sutta that we are going to discuss uh, in this retreat. It does mention the way how person can lose everything from his life. If you are not taking care of your parents, that would be one reason to lose everything, your wealth and health, everything, that you are not taking care of your parents. And uh, there is another sutta which we call Vasala Sutta, how you step down in, in your status or anything that you step down, which means you are becoming a low person, low quality person, if you are not take care of your parents. You have ability, having that ability, if you are not take care of your parents, you are becoming a low person. Low person means quality wise. Quality, not, you are not a good quality person. So it does mention in that Vasala Sutta. So then we have as human beings obligations to take care of our mother and father. I would like to share a story. This happened in Thailand, the actual a true story. Years ago, uh, early in the morning, while the monks were sweeping outside the temple, they heard the sound from the gates, where the entrance for the temple. Looking here and there, at the end, they found a box. Sounds coming from that box. Monks went to the box and they took it, opened it, they saw there was a baby. It is baby. Little infant. Maybe two, three days born. Two, three days ago born. So, they took that baby into the temple, made an announcement. If there is someone, mother or father, please come and take him. Few days they were looking, looking, nobody appears. Then, monks and the congregation decided to take care of that baby in the temple. They decided. People who are coming to temple, they brought everything that baby needs. Omilas and everything. Napkins and everything. Monks and other people who are in the temple, they are taking care of the baby. Now baby is growing in the temple with the help of uh, temple supporters and monks. When the time passed, at the age three or four, he started to connect with a pre-K, not pre-K actually, kindergarten, just to play with the other kids like Montessori. And then he get to know some other kids. And then they were communicating each other with, in their capacity. That the temple boy was listening to them, then they were telling about their parents, mother and father, brothers and sisters, grandparents, uncle and aunts. And sometimes some kids telling, oh, I got this from my uncle, I, I got this from my brother, or I got these shoes from my father on my birthday, something like that. 
But the, this poor fellow who is living in the temple with the monks doesn't know any of these people. He knows only monks and other supporters. Kind of confusing himself. After school, going into his room, he started to whisper in himself, Oh, my all other friends, they have their parents. They have mother, they have father, they have brother, they have sister, they have uncles, aunts. I don't have anyone. Okay, one day, if my mother come, I don't want to talk. I'm angry with my mother. I'm angry with my father. I don't want to talk to them. He was whispering. While he was whispering, just cross the monk there, the high priest, just, he got these words, few words, something about anger. Then monk asked him to come to him. That young fellow went to the monk. Then monk made few questions for him, started the conversation. Dear, what do you think if someone giving money, do you like it? According to his capacity, he said, yes. Just think about someone giving a dollar. Yes, I like to accept it. What do you say? Thank you. If someone giving ten dollars, I'm very happy. I'm ready to accept it. Say it more, thank you. According to him, ten dollars is big money. How about uh, he might not have an idea about uh, hundred dollars, but dollars means something he know, he knows, and then monk was asking, how about if someone giving hundred dollars, I'm very happy, jumping up and giving hug, I'm ready to say thank you for that person. Okay. It means you are happy if someone giving money for you. Yes. Of course, why not? Then the monk turned into other side and then asked another question, different questions. Okay. Someone coming, asking a finger from you, giving some money. Do you like to give your finger? Taking money and looking at finger he turning here and there, they said, No, 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 no. If I don't have my finger, how I can uh, use pen and pencils? It is impossible. So therefore, no, I can't give my finger. I want to keep my finger. Okay. Okay, someone come in and asking you, giving more money, your hand. Would you like to give your hand? Would you like to sell your hand? Turn in here and there his hands and turn into monk and said, No. Without my hand, how I wear my shirt? How I tight my shoes? How I go to school, play with my other uh, friends? So, no. I don't need that money. I want to keep my hand. Okay. Now you can see turning to him, the monk was asking from him, see, materials that you have, all these materials that you got from your mother and father, but the materials priceless, those materials are priceless, you can't make a price for that. These priceless materials you got from your mother and father, your mother and father, therefore, no way to develop anger to them. Don't develop anger. Just think about the things that you have with you now. All these things got from you. So see, this is kind of a good story that we have to think about ourselves. Unpriceable, unvaluable materials that we got from our parents. So therefore, we have obligations to take care of them when they need it. That's why Buddha said, Brahma ti mata pitaro pubba charya ti uchari. Your mom and dad is the Maha Brahma. Because, as you know, the Buddha started to deliver Dhamma in Indian society. 
which based on Hindu tradition. According to Hindu teachings, Mahabrahman is the creator god. The Buddha said, creator god is not someone who is living out of the world, in Brahma world. Creator god is your mom and dad. Therefore, I would like to make announcement about your mom and dad. They are Mahabrahman. They are Mahabrahman. Creator God is not someone else, your mom and dad. Pubbacharya, they are the first teachers of us. They taught us the language, they taught us the culture, they taught us the way how we should behave, walking, talking, all these activities we got from our parents. That's why they became first teachers of us, not our uh, preschool teachers, not our school teachers, university teachers. Our first teachers are our parents. So therefore, we have to respect them. We have to take care of them. That is our obligations. And looking after spouse and children, because in this uh, family is very important in our life. We born to a family as well as we are creating a family. We born to a family where we met our mother and father, brothers and sisters, and we create a father where we have spouse and children. So both are equal, therefore we have responsibility to continue this society peacefully, happily. Therefore, we have obligations to respect each other, take care of each other. For what benefits for the society, well-being of the citizens of the country, of, this, of, of, this, of the society. So if we are not take care in the family, then how would be the nature of other faculties, likewise uh, uh, education, uh, religion, uh, econo ec econo econ economics, uh, all these faculties going to be mesh if you are not take care in your base. Your base is your family. So therefore, it might be the family you born, it might be the family that you created. So whatever, it doesn't matter. To get blessings, you have to take care of it. Without take care in your spouse, there is no blessings, okay? Don't forget it. So, engage in harmless occupation, and occupation is also very important. You should, you should find occupations which is very helpful to practice your spirituality as well as to develop your spirituality. If you are engaging with uh, some kind of harmful, uh, uh, making some uh, stress with you, stress yourself, these kind of occupations are not helpful to develop a insight. Therefore, you have to find occupations which is harmless for yourself and others. So, this is a blessing. So in uh, time has passed, but we did not finish the sutta. Uh, let's take another time for the rest of the stanzas. We can discuss it another time. Now we can take a break and come back here for Q and A sessions within. 10 15 minutes so if there is no much question and questions so then we can use to we can use this time to continue this okay thank you very much